Hello, friends. What? Something looks different. Oh my god, you know what? You know, right? I, I have forgot to put the owl back on the bookshelf. Let me just... There you go. Thanks, now everything's the same. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, I have purple hair now and I am obsessed. Anyways, we're here today to chat poetry books for spring. And I feel like poetry is such a great medium to talk about nature anyways. You know, all the famous quotes like, shall I compare thee to... Wait, no, that's... Oh my god, no, that's summer. Um... Okay, I can't think of a spring quote off the top of my head, so... Let's just jump into the book recs. So the first book recommendation I have for you is A Fire In My Head by Ben Oakry, which is all the way up there. And I do actually own a physical copy, but I forgot to get it down. So we're just gonna roll with it. Now, while there's a lot going on in this collection, cause it is quite politically charged. I think the unsung hero of this collection is poems that deal with nature and the natural world. If you've been here before, you may already know that one of the most popular videos on my channel is actually a full review of this collection. And in that review, I read a poem Poem called Everest from the collection that describes, you guess it, the experience of describing Mount Everest, but in such a gorgeous and beautiful way that you can't help but like click your fingers and go, oh my god, yes, preach. But yeah, no, in all seriousness, this collection has some gorgeous, gorgeous poems about nature and the changing nature eh, <laughs> of life, which I feel like perfectly encapsulates spring. And it is just chef's kiss. The next book recommendation I've got for you is How Kyoto Breaks Your Heart by Florentina Leo. Full disclaimer, I have only read parts of this collection, but if when you think of spring, you're a weeb like me, you probably think of cherry blossoms in Japan. Kiss, kiss for love. And even though this is categorized as a collection of essays, I do think it deserves to sit under the genre of poetry because so many of the essays in the collection look and act like poems. For example, also yes, it's reading time, prepare yourself for a reading. This poem called Reasons for Tea, which says to celebrate, to thank someone, to enjoy the scent of different incense, to listen to the ring, to view an autumn moon reflected on a pond outside, to watch snow blanket the garden, to hear the texture of that silence, to walk through freshly fallen snow before dawn on the way to the tea house, to drink tea by candlelight, to remember someone, to bask in the light the cool early summer mornings, because it is spring, because the leaves are changing colour, because it is autumn, because the plum blossoms are out, because the world is beautiful, because why not? And now to add my own contribution, because you're filming a YouTube video early in the morning. So I think that perfectly encapsulates spring, even though it does talk about the changing seasons, but hey, that's what spring's about. Also, one of my book talk pals, Katrina, wrote a lovely review about this collection on Goodreads, and I think posted a TikTok about it. So I will leave links to both of those in the description if you wanna check them out. And realistically, it's not optional, you should. Also follow me on TikTok while you're there. The next recommendation that I have for you is The How by Ursa Daly Ward. And in a similar way, this book is technically an essay collection, but can definitely be described as poetry and is very sort of genre defying. You know, we just love a queen that's hard to put in a box. In my previous video about self-care books, I spoke in a lot more detail about The How, so I won't do a reading of it or go into too much detail here. But what gives it spring vibes for me is actually the writing itself. And if I had to describe the reading experience of this book I'd say it feels like taking a jump off a diving board into like a pool of words but it feel but like in a good way you know right it's very freeing and very relaxing and calming and soothing so now welcome to the dark portion of the video well not like terribly dark but like things aren't going to be as light and floaty as before so the next book recommendation I have for you is Hold Your Own by Kay Tempest, which I also own and can hold, but also forgot to get it down from the top of my bookshelf. So you're just gonna have to trust me. So Hold Your Own is a collection by Kay Tempest that uses the myth of 
the blind prophet Tiresias as a kind of narrative device, but I would say you don't really need to know the myth to enjoy this collection. And like I said, there is definitely a sort of narrative running through it, but there's also poems that you can pick out of the collection individually and read and that just hit you so hard that you're like, oh my God, I really needed to hear that today. For example, if you are from the UK, you might remember that Kate Tempest's poem, Hold Your Own, was iconic during lockdown. So basically, this collection gives fuck you winter, spring is here now vibes, I have arrived, move. Right, so I actually remembered to take this book off my shelf this time, which I am very pleased about. But spoiler alert, I am about to recommend two books by the same author. And also, I feel like this is kind of like the bookish equivalent of outfit repeating, something that shouldn't be controversial, but I've definitely seen people on BookTok complaining about. So, The Girl and the Goddess is a novel in verse that follows a young girl named Pyro, whose family is sort of reeling from the after effects and the ruptures of partition. And we follow her as she grows from childhood to adulthood. And one of the many reasons that I adore this book is that the Hindu spirituality is so deeply tied into it. And you know, spring has been co-opted by Easter, but hello, holy, it's literally holy when I'm filming this, come on. And the poems in the book, even though it is like a narrative because obviously there's a novel in verse they make me feel so like grounded and connected to like my ancestral roots and like the earth and it's just so good also take a look at these gorgeous illustrations like i'm sorry but if that's not enough to convince you then <laughs> i don't know what will be but side note and in all seriousness i would recommend checking the trigger warnings for this book before you check it out. And now we are peddling back to Western mythology because Great Goddesses is a collection of poems based on the stories that come out of ancient Greek mythology. And you guessed it, it's mostly focused around the gods and goddesses of Olympus. But the main sticking point of this collection is that these stories have been rewritten and reimagined through a feminist angle. So the overarching theme of this collection and these poems is metamorphosis, AKA transformation, AKA change aka growing aka the changing of seasons aka spring we got there in the end and the final book recommendation i have for you is time is a mother by ocean bong now for some reason this title takes me back to a warm spring day in 2017 when i was depressed and studying a level english those two things are not related and we were studying the winter's tale. I don't know why I'm using this book to like point and enunciate. I'm going to put this down. And we were studying The Winter's Tale by Shakespeare. And we were reading time as in the character's monologue because Shakespeare's got to be extra, you know. He's like, mm, time can't just be an overarching theme. Let's put a, a whole character in there. And that's what this collection really feels like is a sort of mellow personification of time. So you might be thinking, Pranka, uh, time, hello. Where's the spring? Where's the baby lambs? Where's the meadows? Where's the flowers blossoming? Where's the, the dead man with a beard rising from a cave? Well, my answer for you, friend, is that when you read the first poem in the collection, it really does just like fuck you in, you know? It's like a full body experience because it talks about time in a multitude of ways, like moving forwards, backwards, past, present, future, all of that. And it's about time and how it relates to grief and sitting in grief because the collection is about the sort of aftershocks of Ocean Vong's mother passing away. But it also talks about how to overcome that grief and come out of the other side and sort of blossom out of it, hence spring. And so it's really got that like moving from winter to spring vibe. And honestly, we really need that in London right now. Cause like looking outside, I'm like, oh my God. And it's meant to snow next week. So like, <laughs> rip. But hey, you can bring the sun to you and whatever device you're watching on by checking out my summer poetry book recommendations here. And as always, I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you over there in the next video. Bye.